In the long past forgotten Alden days of yesteryear, man struggled to conquer the ever-spanding reaches of the inter-cyber techno communa hyperchannel, colloquially known as Internet. Man struggled indeed, until the pseudo-pressures of an individual's personal strive for ultimate kinetic progression of mind-body affairs caused a rupture in the boundaries separating the digital and physical spirit worlds. Perhaps you've heard this story. Perhaps not. It is a tale seldom told to the likes of common men of ordinary virtue. It is a tale for men of magnitude, forbearance and vigor. But equally so, a tale for women. It is the tale of Edgrigrius, the man who dared become one with internet. Edgrigrius lied trepidly in the medium firm posturpedic discomfort of his queen-sized linens, uproariously reflecting upon all he has yet to find not sleeping because his thoughts were running wild. He thunk to himself. My eagerness for knowledge keeps me awake, yet I cannot acquire said knowledge without use of scholarly sources or internet. On he thunk. If perchance I might could, somehow or other, connect my mind to internet or scholarly source, I could lie in my queen-sized linens learning new information during my sleep sequence. It Gregorius aborted current sleep sequence to spend his night's time hooking himself up to the internet. He succeeded in doing so, not knowing what grave dangers lie ahead. Time passed as it Gregorius lie in harmonial oneness with the great digital mindhead, learning all new ideas as far as his curiosity could think, transmitting the answers to all his earthly wonders directly into his brain, without knowing his own human mind thoughts were simultaneously being transmitted in their place. Enter Quirgly Wirt Nerman, Renaissance Man. Far off, in another land unbeknownst to it, Grigrius, Quirgly Wirt Nerman, an upstart Renaissance Man, sits in solitude measuring the airwaves of faraway lands with the precise calibrations of his calculatronograph. Quirgly thought he had seen it all, but with all the wave measurements and all of his volumes of charts and graphs, Quirgly could not explain the disturbance the calconotronograph presented before his eyes. He ran a few basic code sequences to decipher the data. Nothing. He ran a few more sophisticated sequences. Nada. Quirkly ran a full Dianetic scan using all the major and minor advanced sequence coding from all the databases available in his time and place. Still no results. Quirkly wrote Nerman thought. This can't be. For any of this to make sense, there would have to be a rupture in the boundary separating the digital and physical spirit worlds. Quirgly froze because he knew that he'd been right. He knew that if he did not somehow find a way to patch the gap in the dual world equilibrium, the human race would not make it past the next harvest season. After carefully reading the data code log generated by the Quirgly oligotriograph, forwards, backwards, from middle to end, from end to middle to start front, from middle start to end forward, and from end middle start front to middle start end middle start front backwards, Quirgly immediately knew that somewhere in a faraway land he promised himself he'd never see, some fool had unwittingly become one with internet, ruining it for everybody else. It Grigrius had bitten off more than he could chew. The Cogliophagana Pagaraga graph was decalibrating before Quirgly's eyes. He had to think quick. What could possibly destroy the internet? But a second internet. Quirgly spent the next 15 minutes developing a second, more powerful internet to rival the first. More powerful meant more bandwidth, more search engines, more pornography, spam emails, corrupted mp3 files, and more potential to destroy the human race. Quirgly Wirt Nerman hopped aboard his secret flying machine he invented the night before. By the time he made it to Edgrigrius village, the sky was already turning black. There he arrived to find Edgrigrius 40 feet tall, shooting laser beams out of his retinas and cluttering the streets with pop-up ads for penis growth pills. 
He tried to reason with it, Grigrius. Perhaps you could be a darling and hold off on whatever endeavor led you to connect yourself one with internet until at least the next harvest season's time. Surely you do not believe the destruction of your home and fellow brethren is a proper discourse. But Grigrius could neither see nor hear the upstart renaissance man chiding in on his slaughterous engagement. All Grigrius could see or feel were the melting walls, uplifting feeling within, a new concept that all animate and inanimate are of the same regard, the ancient symbols comprising all around him and a new devotion to worship the sun and destroy everything around him. So Quirgly Wirt Nerman did something that would quite literally baffle you. Quirgly Wirt Nerman became one with Second Internet. This second inter cyber techno communa hyper channel Quirgly invented worked multi fold faster than its predecessor, and in a matter of seconds, Quirgly too was a 40 foot monster equipped with laser eyes and an unlimited supply of big dick pills. Quirgly Wirt Nerman knew he could not be one with the inter cyber for long, or his accelerated creation would destroy even more than just mankind. With all the new knowledge Quirgly had instantly gained in his oneness with his creation, he quickly determined the easiest way to take down the internet, by severing its connectivity with an internife. He rendered an internife program file and emailed it to Egregrius Central Control Center. He managed to cut all links of the internet except one, so he rendered an inter broadsword for the ceremonial finishing blow. Alas, Egregrius had been disconnected. The nightmare was over and Egregrius returned to his state of being fully human, no longer posing a threat to the human race or the next harvest season. But Quirgly Wirt Nerman killed him anyway. <laughs>